false information. Death continues to grab the attention of our nation. Lawmakers in several states, including here in Florida, working on what they're calling Kaylee's Law. Now, if this is passed, parents who don't report their minor aged child missing within 24 hours would face felony charges. Another state lawmaker looking to file two bills in light of this Casey Anthony trial as well. One, if passed, would prevent jurors from being able to profit from the trials they served on. The other would keep the jurors' names sealed from the public for a certain amount of time. Regardless of what you think of the Casey Anthony verdict, that trial may very well impact the way things run here in the state of Florida. Down the line, here to talk more about the evolution, perhaps, of our legal system. Post Casey, we have Defense Attorney Diana Tennis, State Representative Scott Plakin, and State Representative Scott Randolph. All of you, thanks for being here. And we're going to start with Kaylee's Law. We've been hearing a lot about this, Representative Plakin. We're going to start with you. Uh, basically, punishing parents if they don't report their kids missing. Critics have said, how do you legislate common sense? I mean, shouldn't parents know already to do that? Well, there's been a lot of controversy about the trial in general, but one thing I think everybody agrees with is that it shouldn't be okay in the state of Florida for somebody to run around for 31 days while the child is either right. missing or deceased. Yeah. So uh, this Casey Anthony actually proved that we do need a law to fill this loophole in Florida law. And Diana, you have you have some thoughts on that? Um, well, I don't know that I see it as a loophole. To be honest, there were other things that the state could have charged her with and didn't, including uh, neglect of a child because she did not supervise that child well during those 30 days or at all, and obviously some something happen outside of her supervision or improper disposal of a body. More laws on the books aren't going to make the state charge all the things that they could charge, and they could have really covered that behavior already under the law. Representative Randolph, I want to get your thoughts on this, too. You have come up with um, some interesting ideas when it comes to the jury. We have seen a couple of these people try to make a quick buck off of interviews. Uh, you think that's okay, or are you trying to change that? Well, I, I think it really uh, impedes our impartial jurors. And so, I mean, I'll be introducing legislation that creates a, a, a cooling off period. It does not prevent them from talking to the media. Mm -hmm. just prevents them for a period of time from getting compensation. We're also going to be working on legislation to ensure that jurors' names don't get released for a certain amount of time, too. So it protects jurors right. and protects the jur judicial system. Let me ask you, you all this, and whoever feels compelled to answer first, just do so. Is this case unique in the ire, in the anger it has inspired? Um, in the public, again, those, of course, being who don't agree with the verdict. I think it's been very controversial. I think there have been a lot of negative press, and I think that's why we need to be really careful not to enact laws based on unusual, um, high-impact, high-publicity cases. Um, I just don't know that that's, uh, that necessarily helps us when we just cram more laws into the books. Uh, and Scott uh, Plakin and Scott Randolph. Actually, Scott Randolph, well, I saw you you got to uh, say something first. Well, though. I was going to say, I mean, you've got a controversial decision, and I think that's why it's important now to protect jurors, and that's going to be part of this legislation, right. to pro protect release of their names, because you want a juror to be able to take the facts, not opinion of media, not opinion from outside, and without fear of uh, being being threatened, like we've already heard from juror, some jurors as well. But I would say that uh, what Diana just referred to, some of the existing laws clearly weren't sufficient, and I believe those would be misdemeanors. Kaylee's law would create felony charges for the fact pattern exhibited no. here, and I think it's important we send the message to the world that mm -hmm. for 31 days you can't run around while your child is either missing or deceased and it be okay in the state of the Florida. There needs to be serious uh, penalties attached to that. All right. And by the way, this will go through a bunch of House committees and Senate committees and a governor before it becomes law. So they'll probably right. it's, it's got a long way to go. And um, Scott Plake, in just a, a couple of seconds, literally 10 seconds left, but big difference between a two-year-old going missing and a 17-year-old who's also still technically a minor. Would there be some sort of provision in there for a differentiation between those two or no? Well, on the missing part of uh, Kaylee's law, it, it restricts it to children under 12 years old. So okay. we've already covered that within the first draft. Right. Diana Tennis, Scott Plakin, and Scott Randolph, thank you all for coming in tonight.